o'clock, and this is the regularly scheduled City Commission meeting for July 30th, 2019. I'd like to introduce the folks that are sitting up in front of you, uh, and I hope you felt welcome this evening by Sean Finley, our City Engineer, and Police Lieutenant Jim Doggett, who were our greeters. Uh, to my right and your left, Cassidy Ritz, our Recording Secretary, City Clerk Colby Salento, Commissioner from Zone 1, Dwight Selby. Our Deputy Mayor and Zone 2 Commissioner, Troy Kent. To my left and your right, Commissioner Susan Persis from Zone 3. Commissioner Rob Littleton from Zone 4. City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Deputy City Attorney Anne Margaret Emery. And for those of you listening online, I'm Mayor uh, Bill Partington. At this time, we'll have the invocation given by Pastor Mike Petrick from Harbor Baptist Church, and that'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be here tonight, and Lord, there's uh, much to do here in the city. We're grateful for these uh, workers, volunteers, and such that have put together uh, these agendas, Lord, things to be considered and looked at. Lord, we know it's nothing done lightly in this, in this place, and we ask for your immense wisdom to be given. Father, I pray that you're truly on the agenda as well with these other things. And Lord, we just look to you for uh, our help and guidance. Again, we appreciate each person here and all that's going to be said and done tonight, and may you be glorified in it all. Lord, please lead the way. Lord, may all things be done decently and in order and in a way that you would be pleased. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we're grateful. Amen. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will uh, move to agenda item number four, which is the adoption of the fiscal year 2019-2020 proposed millage rates. And I'll ask the city clerk to read the resolution by title only. Resolution number 2019-116, a resolution adopting proposed millage rates for the 2019-2020 fiscal year, establishing the date, time, and place for the first public hearing on the proposed millage rates and the tentative budget, directing communication, expressing legislative intent, and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-116, read by title only. Thank you, Colby, and I just need a motion to uh, get the resolution on the floor. Move for approval, resolution number 2019-116. Second. All right. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Can I, you mind if I make a motion to amend the tentative um, operating millage at this time? Please do. I'm going to make that motion to amend. The tentative operating millage to 4.087 mills, and this is for the two new fire um, trucks and the new police vehicles that we were just talking about at our, our workshop prior to this meeting. Second. All right, a motion and a second uh, to the amendment based on the budget workshop that we just had earlier. And uh, Let's see. Do we need to vote on that, Joyce, or do I go ahead and read the statutory language? Say all, all in favor. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Oppose like sign. Uh, we'll show that amendment passed unanimously. And I will state that per Florida statute, I'm required to state that the tentative millage rate for the city of Ormond Beach necessary to fund the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget is 4.087 mills. This rate is 3.36% above the rollback rate of 3.9543 mills. The tentative debt service millage rates are 0 
for the 2003 general obligation bond sinking fund and 0 0.1000 for the 2010 general obligation bond sinking fund. This is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak or ask questions prior to adoption of the tentative millage rate? I don't have any cards. You put for not on the agenda. Did you mean it for this item? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. That's fine. It's not a problem. Jim Cameron. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Jim Cameron, Senior Vice President, Government Relations, Daytona Regional Chamber. And, uh, and I did want to commend you for, I mean, that was a very uh, informative, I thought, productive workshop that y'all have. And, uh, and again, I wanted to uh, commend uh, Kelly McGuire, I mean, just for, for the fine work that she does in preparing that budget. Every time I call, she's very much informative and provides any, for any questions I may have. Uh, let me just say this, just, I know a lot of your homeowners and stuff, I mean, that they, you know, are gonna see this as advantageous and all I mean like that. But please keep in mind that it has to be made up. I mean, just that some other dollars are gonna have to be made up with the non-homesteaded properties. And that's gonna be like, say, your businesses, but I also wanted to add another group, and that is your renters out there. And you got a lot of folks, especially in Volusia County, that are living paycheck to paycheck, though. Last night, there was a meeting of the First Step Shelter Board, which I want to commend Dwight for his, uh, for his work on that. I mean, and that's just something that we also want to thank you for your support of that for First Step Shelter. We'd like to work, continue working with you as that center hopefully opens October soon. So uh, we appreciate it. But just keep that in, in mind though, it's not just the, the home on non-homestead properties, businesses, but also those renters out there as well though. Thank you. Understood, thank you, Jim. Anyone else? I would ask for a uh, motion and a second to adopt the uh, tentative millage rate resolution as amended. I move to accept the um, adopted millage rate as amended. Second, Mr. Mayor. All right. The tentative operating millage of 4.087 mills is 3.36% above the rolled back millage rate. The resolution also includes adoption of the tentative debt service millage rates at 0 0.0330 for the 2003 general obligation bond sinking fund and 0 0.1000 for the 2010 general obligation bond sinking fund. And uh, Madam Clerk, if you would please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And do you want to vote on the uh, underlying motion as well, or do we handle that with the voice vote? You've handled that. Okay. Good deal. Let me just read a little more, and I apologize for all the, the legalese, but we have to correctly, by statute, create the record on these matters. and. Uh, Thank you to staff for making sure we have the appropriate language. At this time, I'll announce the tentative operating millage rate is set at 4.087 mills, which is 3.36% above the rolled back millage rate of 3.9543 mills. With that, we will move to item number five on our agenda for this evening. Audience remarks and start with Ike Leary. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, and staff, uh, good evening. Uh, I just want to touch on a couple of things. Uh, we had our 20th year, and uh, and and the proclamation. Good stuff. Wow. 
Uh, okay, number two, the fishing contest on the beach was great. Uh, we had some 40-some kids. Uh, they had fun. It was nice weather. They caught fish. Uh, everything from whiting to sharks. Excellent. Uh, it was great. The fireworks were spectacular. Uh, every year they get better. Every year. Uh, <clears throat> I'm getting with with leisure services, and next summer we're going to offer a kids fishing clinic. Uh, we'll do it in the month of June. It'll be free. It, uh, we'll do the two age groups. Uh, three hours a day and then free lunch wow. uh, so that's gonna be good that's fantastic. Uh, unfortunately I've got another obligation but thank you thank you I appreciate you Bill Denny Mayor, Commissioners, I'm Bill Denny, 1027 North Halifax. I'm here today representing the group Civil Discourse. I want to thank uh, the Commissioner Persis and Commissioner Selby for engaging the public uh, in our town hall. We can tell the passion that y'all had for the issues you brought forward, single-use plastic and septic <sighs> issues. Our guidelines for the civil discourse is a respectful exchange of ideas and beliefs and offering everybody an opportunity to speak. I was manning the sign-in table and had opportunity to observe the whole thing without having to get involved with it. And I think both the commissioners, I think, achieved one of our basic principles, which is active listening. And I think the public came away from that, that it was a real two-way conversation and you got the issues out on the floor. Also, I want to announce that we hold our public meetings the second and fourth Monday of each month at uh, 5.30 at the public library, or Beach Library. Uh, our theme for next month is what the heck is smart growth and what does it mean to me? Uh, on August 12th, we'll just have a citizen round table with you know, no speaker. For August 26th, we've invited, for our town hall, we've invited Clay Irvin, who I think is the economic developer for the county, county. and also County Councilwoman Heather Post is our representative to get the county perspective. As of yet, we have not heard back from him, and we're still seeking if we can go that way. Lastly, I want to ask the mayor and the other commissioners if you have some passionate issue that you would like to discuss with the public, we would be greatly honored to work with you and achieve civil discourse. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Doyle Lewis. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I'm here on two different issues. The main one I'm going to talk about is the one that hit the paper today. The Urban Institute uh, concluded that the most valuable non-financial asset in the United States is a home. I built homes for 40 years. They're saying that the American seniors are facing an affordable housing crisis overall maximum on the levels and it should rise higher within the federal government. The entire reason why I exist in Flagler and Lucia County is because I was begged to come fix this problem. And I never get in a hurry. You know what a stop sign is? It usually gives you red in your eyes if you don't stop. In 2012, New York 
Times story found that 1.5 million homeowners over 55 lost their homes between 2007 and 2011 because of this crisis. It's affected every grandchild in America. It affected every school that you have been teaching. The biggest obstacle to this obvious reform is to I can't even read my writing. One to the most reforms. Permanent DC didn't thank it up and hasn't realized its logic. It means that they don't understand young America or old America. Thank you. The second one is the homeless large expensive building and nobody knows why the sheriff wants to run it it was never figured to let the sheriff run that building I've been through 12 years of this in Volusia County I don't want to be lied to today thank you my name is Doyle Lewis United States thank you Doyle move to uh, approval of the minutes the minutes have been sent to the Commission for review also posted to the city's websites any additions deletions corrections these are the June 4th 2019 minutes I move approval of the minutes from June 4th 2019 is there a second I said I second thank you all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. Oppose, like sign we'll show them passing unanimously and at this time, uh, the following items are community redevelopment items. And the City Commission in Ormond Beach serves as the community redevelopment agency of the city and must review these items and make a recommendation as the CRA. Therefore, we will recess the City Commission meeting and call the CRA meeting to order. Uh, as chairman of the CRA, I'll open the public hearings and ask 7A be read. Resolution number 2019-117, a resolution of the City Commission, also acting as the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, accepting the bid of DSR Construction, Inc. regarding the Memorial Gardens Retaining Wall Improvements Project, bid number 2019-27, rejecting all other bids, authorizing the execution of a contract and payment thereunder, and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-117, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. I don't have any cards for 7A. Is there any discussion? I move for approval, Mayor. Second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. We'll show that passing unanimously. We will close the public hearings and reconvene the city commission meeting. And that brings us to the consent agenda, item number eight. Does anyone wish to remove any item from the consent agenda? If not, I just need a motion and a second. I move the uh, consent agenda, Mr. Mayor. Second. Please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And uh, before we move on, now would be the appropriate time if any commissioner wishes to comment as to any of the items on the consent agenda. If not, we will move on to item nine. I will open the public hearings and ask that the clerk read 9A. Resolution number 2019-132, a resolution authorizing the execution and issuance of a first amended special exception development order for 2017 Granada 2 Orman LLC located within the Shops on Granada Phase 2, a multi-tenant project located at 1246 West Granada Boulevard within the B10 Suburban Boulevard Zoning District to allow a 2,400 square foot restaurant type C use, ratifying and affirming prior approvals, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval, providing for recordation and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-132, read by title only. Thank you, 
Colby, and I will ask uh, Planning Director Stephen Spraker to uh, start us off on this item. Good evening, Stephen Spraker, Planning Department. This is a request for a special exception. Um, the area is the Shops on Granada, which is a combination of non-conforming properties. Uh, there are non-conforming houses and a non-conforming uh, commercial structure that was redeveloped. Within the B10 zoning district, there are established uses. There are permitted uses in this column that are allowed to be done by right, for example, uh, retail sales. There are conditional uses in this column, such as a restaurant without a drive through and then there are special exception uses. The restaurant type C isn't allowed use in the B10 zoning district, but it has to go through a process that goes through the planning board and review and approval uh, by the city commission. So that's the process that we're going through tonight. The Shops in Granada is a multi-phase project. This was the area of phase one next to the Lowe's site. Um, this site is all developed. And then phase two is completing construction. This is an aerial of the phase two construction. Um, again, if going from this angle, this is the Shops in Granada phase two, where you have um, the ex existing businesses. The TD Bank and Spectrum are uh, just about complete. Aldi is under construction. Dr. Salzburg moved from the back to the front. And this box is the area that we're talking about tonight. These uses were allowed or conditional uses within that zoning district. So they were approved by a site plan review committee. The use tonight is not. It requires the action of the city commission in order to make this determination. The site plan in your packet um, is on the screen and basically shows a 36 foot landscape buffer. It shows a 2,400 square foot building, which is the restaurant type C, and it shows a 1,400 square foot um, building, which was uh, proposed as a personal service. At the planning board, that restaurant type C was identified as Starbucks. Um, our land development code requires six stacking spaces. They are providing 13. The development order doesn't specifically require a Starbucks. Um, it requires, um, if allowed, it would be a 2,400 square foot restaurant. They would not be able to increase the size of the restaurant unless they came back to the city commission as an amendment. At the planning board, um, they recommended approval with a four to two vote. Um, there was um, approximately six speakers who spoke um, on the item. The planning board recommended approval with a couple conditions. One was they couldn't exceed 2,400 square feet. Um, as part of the Type C restaurant, and that ties to approximately 595.5 trips. Um, the staff recommendation from the site plan, review site plan Review Committee is approval. What the staff did is went through the development order criteria, and we believe it meets it. Within your packet, there is a traffic study that shows the impacts of the development. The traffic study actually shows a, a restaurant at 3,100 <coughs> 3, square feet, so it was slightly higher than, than what is being proposed tonight. Um, with the project, they will construct a, or they already have constructed a left-hand turn. So one of the issues today is the access into the site, the Lowe's traffic light. So now you'll be able to do both the Lowe's traffic light and a left-hand turn where your Aldi's is. So you'll have twice the flow going in there. Um, within your packet, there are letters of objection to the special uh, exception request and staff is ready to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen at this time? Yes, yourself. Stephen, I, I, did, I didn't, you said, you mentioned left-hand turn, all these, it, did you just? So this, this uh, area right here, yeah. so it was a full access meeting uh, on the other side, I believe is Pearl Drive. So this left-hand turn, turn movement uh, will, will double what you can do to get into the, into the overall intersection. Right now, the only way that you can make a left-hand turn is at that traffic light uh, at Lowe's. So now this is a second way to get into the site. The concern expressed at the planning board was coming out of the site. So that was, that was the concern. This area is also a transportation concurrency exception area. So transportation concurrency doesn't apply. We still make them do a traffic study and they meet the level of service of C. So the process is it goes through our site plan review committee, planning board recommend, made a recommendation, and then it's before the commission tonight. And then can you, could you address internal circulation inside the, within the shops of Granada? And then does it also connect uh, to the Lowe's development and the barbecue restaurant? It, it does. Restaurant the, the, entire, the entire site is interconnected. Um, this driveway uh, leads off into the Lowe's. So you could get to uh, Lowe's. You can get into the site and outside the site where the Dustin's is. Um, there's an internal access point here so they can come in at left, 
left in and then right out. Um, so it's all interconnected. There is an interconnection with uh, Mirror Lake Drive through the, the bank, which is now vacant. So there are multiple access points for the project, and it's all interconnected per, per our comprehensive plan. Stephen, Stephen, can you, when you, if you exit and turn east, you know, turn right out of there, is it legal uh, to make that U-turn where you can, you know, there's not a light there, but there's, I can't remember, it might be Tomoka Avenue or? Right, so there, there are um, two areas that you could make U-turns before the Clyde Morris access mm -hmm. point. So there's one just a little bit east of Chelsea Place, and then there's another one, right. which I think is uh, Tomoka or uh, Used to be Tobacco Christian Church. It's yeah. uh, Providence Church today. Yeah, so you can make them there. There's two There's two uh, U-turning movements, and you can always make it at the light also at right. Moore's. Okay, thank you. Right. Deputy Mayor Ken. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Planning Director, um, so, you know, Salzburg Veterinary Clinic, Miss Daisy and Dudley, the dynamic dachshund duo, that's our, our vet for our dogs, love that. <laughs> and we have Aldi's, which anybody that knows me knows I'm, I'm flipped out, excited about that place opening but this home to the left can you light that up can you point to that this Have we, home to the left uh, keep go back right no, 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 no. you're going to the right go to the left Sorry. left left right up, so there. up. up. Straight right up. there you were on it right there have we talked to those people um, that one I believe is still in the county and they have not contacted us through the entire process we've talked to um, the two property owners on this side of Mirror Lake right. and the one on this side this one has not contacted staff at all. Okay. And we've worked kind of outside the scope of what what's, we're talking about tonight. There has been a series of discussions and basically efforts to uh, assist the, the drainage within the area that the uh, developer has, has helped with. Basically, the goal is to take those private driveways, make them a public roadway. That way we can do some drainage improvements to help the, the area of Mirror Lake. But we have not talked at all to that. We'd be interested in talking to them to, gotcha. to further extend those drainage improvements. Thank you, Mr. Breaker. Sure. Anyone else? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. And we will start with Roger Stricula, the applicant. Good evening, Mayor Partington, members of the City Commission. Uh, Roger Stracola, owner of Upper Mink, 265 Kenilworth Avenue, Ormond Beach. I am representing the landowner and developer uh, for this project. Uh, Mr. Spraker gave a very good overview of the, the overall shopping center development. Uh, and I, could just, I can just touch on a few items and then answer some questions. The original phase one shopping center, which has Petco, Panera Bread, some retail units. Uh, Mattress One was developed in 2014. Uh, 2017 is when we did phase two of the development, which was approved uh, late 2017, which has TD Bank, Spectrum, and then the Aldi Food Market. Uh, Dr. Salzburg was originally located out front, which is an old house that was built back in the 60s. The developer purchases land and build them a brand new office building right here. Uh, Seacoast Bank, which is not part of the development, and the remainder property that's left over with the out parcels, what our conversation is tonight. Uh, this plan also indicates the connectivity between Mirror Lake and the driveway between Lowe's and Dustin's. In 2014, in the original planning of phase one, staff made it very clear that they wanted interconnectivity from phase one to Lowe's, but they can also go out to the signal. Phase two came along, you know, staff made it very clear, we want to continue that interconnectivity all the way to Mirror Lake, but no, tra no commercial traffic going down the dead end section of Mirror Lake. Uh, this landowner was one of the, uh, Shirley Hess sold a portion of her property for the stormwater pond. The two other property owners across the street, uh, DeFritis and I believe Salome, uh, we've been working with those landowners and city staff for about the last seven months to resolve or help alleviate some of their concerns for drainage on Mirror Lake. That has been just ongoing. Uh, recently, uh, through city staff, my office prepared uh, legal descriptions and sketches of proposed or right-of-way 
that each landowner is willing to give to the city uh, that I believe is in the city attorney's office now uh, for approval for those landowners to sign. So we've met with them, listened to their concerns, and trying to, we've worked out a, a, a drainage solution that would help alleviate their problem, but the city could not perform the work because it was on private property. The only way to resolve that was to get these landowners to donate the 25 foot of their frontage property to the city. The landowner has already given his 25 feet. This property owner here is in the county, so there's nothing we can do with that property owner. This again is just an uh, enlarged view of the proposed uh, two tenant um, retail building and fast food. As Mr. Spraker stated, you know, there's 13 vehicle stacking spaces in there into the development. Uh, the main driveway location here, uh, the right in, right out, directional left in, goes into the um, development. A driveway here to go across the front, which connects all the <coughs> way through to where Panera is located. Uh, this is a little more current aerial photo than what Mr. Spraker had, because I didn't send him this one. But uh, this was uh, taken approximately two weeks ago. Uh, you can see now uh, the proposed improvements that have been installed. Uh, I believe Spectrum just received its CO. Uh, TD Bank is tentatively scheduled or, or working towards next week. Uh, Aldi is anticipating opening sometime in September. So, up, back up. Now, this is the proposed site pad uh, that we're discussing tonight. Now, here's the uh, right in, right out uh, driveway. Dr. Salzberg's uh, new office building, and this is another building pad for future to be determined. All right. So this is a view uh, of the, you know, this is a, a portion of phase one, which has the uh, mattress firm here, uh, Chipotle is here. So TD Bank, Spectrum, and Aldi Food Market, and then here's the uh, uh, building pad. This is the directional left end as part of the permitting through DOT. Um, DOT uh, directed us to, they wanted to improve the safety of that median opening because what was happening, vehicles would be coming across to do, do crossover and too many vehicles were stacking that medium which was causing a lot of backup. So uh, DOT wanted a directional left to have the traffic more fluid uh, moving through Mirror Lake and into the development. And then as part of that, this uh, westbound turn lane was extended to increase stacking of vehicles turning into the uh, shopping center. Uh, this is just uh, an idea because I've, you know, I've listened to a lot of the concerns uh, from the planning meeting from the Chelsea Place residents. Um, um, Chelsea Place was originally permitted in Volusia County around 2002 um, and then annexed in the city. So the city really had no say uh, to the development of Chelsea Place at that time. Uh, when it was approved, uh, it's, it's hard to read here, but there was a stop sign proposed at the entrance with a ride out only sign. Uh, it's, it's marked that way as a ride in, ride out at that location. Uh, and then I, I'm aware that uh, if the traffic, the signal at Lowe's is correct, I mean, there's no traffic coming, people from you know, Chelsea Place are going across the median to make that left turn to do the U turn to go back west. I, it's, I mean, that's just common nature. People want to do that. Even if it's, it's sign right turn only, I can't say whether it's an illegal turn or not, but if it's not been enforced and if, the, if there's opening in traffic, you know, you know, why wait and going down Hidden Lakes? All right. So just as uh, what we try to do is just look at some options and times to leave Chelsea Place to get to Ormond Town Square. Uh, so we looked at three different routes. The first route is uh, just going at the entrance on Granada. If, there's no, if the light is, uh, traffic is right, shoot across the median, make a left-hand turn, and then go into the first left driveway into the shopping center to go to Publix. So on the average peak hour, that was approximately 3 minutes 40 seconds. Uh, and that's hitting a green light at Lowe's. Uh, the second uh, route was to make the right turn out, go down to Hidden Hills, and make a left and go back. And that was, you know, on the average, less than option one. Again, 
It's based on the timing of the signals at Clydemores and Lowe's. Okay, the third option we looked at was to, you know, if you're in Chelsea Place, you want to go to Publix or you want to go to Daytona Beach, you go out the, uh, the south entrance to Hand Avenue. And just on an average, assume you start at the roundabout at Chelsea Place, which is approximately 3,800 feet to Hand Avenue. Assuming going the speed limit in the subdivision, it takes roughly three and a half minutes, which is about what it takes if you do option one. Uh, so these are just, you know, timings that we looked at because we listened to the concerns from the residents uh, to get, you know, if they want to go to uh, Walmart or uh, the public town or the town center or to Daytona Beach. Uh, I've also heard concerns or comments that, you know, Aldi's going to generate a lot more traffic. Well, you know, Aldi was an approved site plan. If people were going shopping at Publix or Walmart, now they have an option to go to Aldi. So they're already going in that direction. I've designed about 70 odd sites for Aldi in Florida. Aldi strategically places itself at, you know, based on their competition. And this is gonna be a good Aldi market. So, I mean, there are people already going shopping out west and they're gonna be going to Aldi store. Uh, just, you know, items to consider. I've already talked about when Chelsea Place was developed. Um, the ride in, ride out. Um, utilizing the median opening at Old Tomoka Road. And when Chelsea Place was developed, Old Tomoka Road has been in existence for longer than I've been alive. And the, the two intersections just don't line up because uh, at Old Tomoka Road, you have the headwater going into the Little Tomoka River, which is a wetland in a big drainage area. The other east side of Chelsea Place is a wetland, so the intersections do not align to signalize it. If there was a signal there, then a lot of this congestion would have been alleviated. Uh, and then, you know, this portion of West Granada Boulevard from Clyde Moores out to, you know, Williamson and beyond, beyond is primarily a office commercial um, corridor. Um, Chelsea Place, you know, it's just their entrances on are just as the entrance with Hidden Hills. And that is the end of my little short presentation, and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Any questions at this time? Thank you, Roger. And I would like to add that uh, reading through the uh, development order and ordinance, the, uh, the restriction for the 2,400 square foot for the single use, um, the developer has no objection to that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bonnie Powell. Ah, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I'm here to respectfully request you deny exemption for a restaurant type C with drive through B10 zoning is for low traffic businesses in keeping with a lower intensity suburban environment. That all these is going into that small cobbled together lot is honestly bad enough, but it's done now and I'm sure people will love shopping there. That should be the last high traffic business permitted there. Only a few of us get notices about these hearings, but anyone who uses Granada or lives in neighborhoods on either side of Granada is affected by this. As anyone who's been over there lately can see, considering a drive through on that overstuffed lot is a mockery of B10 zoning. Yes, developers have a right to develop their property, but they should stick to what's permitted. The phase one shops was one thing, but phase two is quite different. A discount grocer protected to add 2,000 trips per day. Why add another 1,500 trips with a fast food drive through when businesses already permitted under B10 zoning generate only 50 to 200? If this exception goes through, phase two will see an estimated 3,800 trips in and out of realistically one main entrance. The traffic and noise impacts on Granada and the surrounding neighborhoods are substantial and further, not enough is being done to safely get traffic in and out of a high traffic shopping center. Whether Starbucks or not, and the brand should not matter, a drive through generates noise from idling cars, blaring radios, two-way speakers, and people shouting their orders out before the crack of dawn in the case of a Starbucks. Grocery stores and restaurants also have constant deliveries. This noise carries over the retention ponds to the remaining Mirror Lake residents and likely to Chelsea Place. At the June planning board meeting and tonight, there was discussion about downsizing or limiting the projected trips. Is there gonna be a guard there preventing people from entering because they have exceeded the projected daily trip numbers? I don't think so. 
This additional traffic will cause backups on Granada. People will come to a stop to turn into the parking lot, then stop again 20 yards later to enter the drive through Never mind the added confusion of traffic trying to scamper across eastbound Granada. Cars leaving Aldi's and Starbucks will have scarce chance to turn right on Granada, and then they have to head back toward 95. They'll have to make a U-turn at Old Tomoka or Hidden Hills, further clogging up those U-turns, primarily used by local residents, and creating a safety issue because, as you know, on Granada, there is less and less opportunities to make safe use turns. Yes, the traffic impact documents for this project state if drivers need to head back to 95, they can go through phase one and two parking lots to the Lowe's light. With no clear through lanes and stops for cars backing up, who will do that? No one will think of driving behind them all. The Lowe's light is said to have the capacity to handle the U-turn traffic, but cars are already backing up on Granada and it takes twice as long to make a U-turn as it does to make a simple left turn. You can adjust light lengths, but how far can you back up traffic on Granada by changing the lights? Thank you, Bonnie. Just so you know, Bonnie, I got your letter and I have given it to the clerk to make a part of the record mm -hmm. and I did read it. So just like I did with everybody else who sent a letter. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Nancy Rydell. Nancy Riedel, 229 Chelsea Place Avenue. Thank you for hearing us tonight. I'm a Norman Beach homeowner and full-time resident, and I am before you now to ask you to please deny the requested exception for the drive through of the proposed new Starbucks. As many of us know, Granada has become a busier, high-speed, dangerous main thoroughfare. On June 11th, the Norman Beach Observer published an article highlighting the dramatic increase in traffic deaths, many involving Granada. Mayor Partington himself cited speeding, distracted driving, and reckless driving as major causes. In the first six months of 2019, Ormond Beach had six traffic fatalities compared to only one in all of 2018. Of those six, half involved Granada. Within days of that published article, another fatality occurred on Granada, slightly west of I-95. And now consideration is being given to allow an exception for a drive through at the very popular and busy Starbucks. As one of the planning board members stated at the June 13th planning meeting, exceptions have to stop. Ormond Beach is bursting at the seams with growth. I know FDOT did their studies and said everything will be fine. The roadway can handle the extra traffic. Acceleration and deceleration lanes are not warranted. But I highly doubt these FDOT folks are living in our community and driving ground on a daily like we do. If Starbucks is granted this exception, the drive through which I understand will accommodate 13 vehicles to wrap around the building. It will cause a traffic, driving, and safety nightmare. Without a deceleration lane, eastbound traffic on Granada will nearly come to a complete stop as cars enter for Aldi or Starbucks. There is great concern among local residents that traffic will back up and vehicle collisions, or worse, will be frequent. Or cars in the right lane will quickly change the left lane, hopefully with unintended, without unintended consequences. The drive through exception was not unanimously approved at the June 13th planning meeting. The parking and driveway space of Aldi and the proposed Starbucks is already tight, and we haven't even yet added customers or talked about the westbound cars jutting into the driveway across the sidewalk from the turn lane as they wait for that itty bitty little window of time when the low stoplight changes and they might be able to go. Those driver drivers will be watching for cleared traffic. Let's hope they take a moment to look for pedestrians or bicyclists on the sidewalk. Please deny this request tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Hennon. clerk definitely and then the city manager and city attorney would probably appreciate it oh perfect they can share
Robert Hennon, 312 Chesham Street, Ormond Beach. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Commission. I am here tonight not as a true opponent of a Starbucks to be built on West Granada, but as a citizen who is truly concerned with the traffic patterns that will be affected by this entire complex. Yes, Chelsea Place, where I live, is going to be adversely affected by the new volume of traffic created by Aldi's and Starbucks, but it goes beyond that. <coughs> First of all, as concerning the turn in front of Chelsea Place, this will now become the new U-turn for those coming from the shop at Aldi's and Starbucks and wishing to head west. As such, the cars coming from Chelsea Place will find it very difficult to make a U-turn at that point, which is what we normally do. Now, there was a, uh, a statement made about the right turn. It is a right turn over there to come to that U-turn, but I will admit it's cutting across a couple of lanes to do it. But, as was said too, it is human habit, and people try the shortest ways they can to do things. It's just the way it is. Second, and more important, is the scenario that is being created in front of the main entrance in and to out of the all these and the proposed Starbucks. The paper in front of you is something that you have seen before, except for the red, yellow, and blue coloring toward the top of the drawing. The blue represents five lanes of traffic coming from five different directions that are vying to either turn in or out of the complex. The yellow represents the space from the sidewalk to that area where cars will wait to turn. It holds about two cars at a time, which mean that cars turning into that lane from Granada in two opposite directions will have to try and compete for those spaces without either getting hit by an oncoming car or backing up traffic on the eastbound lane of Granada. The red represents what I call accident alley because that is where I foresee most of the accidents that are going to happen, especially because those turning into the complex from the west may have an obstructed view of oncoming traffic. And if you've ever tried to make a turn over there and somebody is trying to make a left turn going uh, eastbound, you cannot see the cars that are coming without inching out. And once you inch out, you're, um, you're in a position to, to be hit. In conclusion, I am not opposed to a Starbucks being put in, even though I am not a coffee drinker. My wife is, though, and she loves the idea of it being so close to us. I am just asking the Commission to reconsider the impact on people trying to get into or out of this area, not to mention the pedestrians that will be crossing directly in front of this multi-way traffic area, and to come up with a better solution. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the cards I have. and. Who would like to start? I guess we need a motion, uh, motion in a second for discussion purposes. Uh, I'll move um, resolution 219-132. Second. Any discussion? Deputy Mayor Kent. Sure, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, so I've said it before and I'll say it again tonight. Granada Boulevard is where businesses should be located. Uh, it's where most of our services, Granada US-1 and State Road A1A, it's, it's where we, we go to, you know, receive services. With that being said, I'll just be the first one out of the gate to let, let everyone know and just also to make sure I, I let everyone, knows and, and everyone know and disclose the developer did reach out to me we had a phone conversation and he asked me to reach back if I had any questions I did not have any questions but mr. mayor and commission um, there's a right use at this location and in, in, in my humble opinion a, um, a restaurant type like this is not the right use I, I will be voting no on this this evening because I agree with everything the residents said um, that Aldi, I am so glad it's coming and so glad it's there, but it's going to be jammed up and not jammed up for two weeks or two months. It's going to be jammed up. And to the last gentleman that brought this visual up, thank you for doing so. I don't know that I'm in agreement with your numbers as far as two cars, but the visual was important because it shows 
where the ingress and, and egress is. And it's, it's something, especially with the problems we've had in that area with traffic, I, I cannot support this evening. Thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner Persis. Um, I appreciate the residents coming and I understand their concerns. Um, I live in, in Tidewater, which is right by Hidden Hills. So I'm, I'm familiar with Chelsea Place and I'm familiar with all the areas and I drive on that road all the time. And um, I personally don't see a traffic problem on Granada. I think there's all kinds of roads that people speed on and they get tickets and there's accidents. It, I think it just so happens that Granada's had a few just recently, but it, it kind of wanes and ebbs. You know, I, I, I think it's just how it, how it is in cities. But, um, you know, living right there, I know the Starbucks that is already there. Uh, when I was working at Pine Trail Elementary, I would drive to Starbucks on my way to work every morning and stop. And that's prime time for a Starbucks is, is early in the morning. And um, if you went at, you know, 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. or 4 p.m., there's no, there's no traffic in a Starbucks. It's, it's usually in the morning, people going to work, stopping to get their coffee. And now that people, typically now, you have the app on your phone where you can uh, order ahead and, uh, you know, it's already paid for. So you, if you're going to go through this drive through you can just, you know, stick your hand out and get your get your uh, coffee and you don't have to you know st to order it right then that's what most people do um, so I I don't see a huge problem with this coming to our, to our area so I will be voting yes Commissioner Selby thank you mayor um, well just a couple of comments first of all I, I appreciate uh, all of the residents that have uh, reached out um, I think I think pretty much everybody that contacted me was a uh, Chelsea Place uh, resident. And um, I, um, I, I think I understand your concerns. Um, most of the concerns were relative to what um, residents perceived to be the additional traffic and the uh, inconvenience of trying to pull out of the neighborhood. Um, I, I just wanted to make a couple of comments, but before I did, I wanted to ask one question of Stephen. Um, and that is relative to the, um, there was a question about uh, the number of trips, maximum number of trips. Is that, is that, how is that actually controlled? It, it's the ITE, the Institute of Traffic Engineering projection for that 2400. So there, there's not going to be anybody out there measuring trips. But based on all the professional traffic studies, that's, that's what it, it generates. The goal of the planning board was not to allow a McDonald's or some other use with a, with a higher square footage to go in there. So that, those two were correlated at the planning board. Right. So, so the trips are determined based on scientific information that's a national sort of average. National standard. Based on the use prior to it actually going in. Correct. Okay. Okay. That's, that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure that's what it was. Okay, so um, I, the first thing I wanted to mention was traffic signals. You know, we're in the process right now of all of Granada. It'll be the first east-west corridor in, um, I believe, in Volusia County. I know on the east side of the county that has the automated um, the artificial intelligence uh, signalization. So instead of sitting there waiting while no cars are coming and you can't turn left, the system will see that that you're waiting to make a left turn, I'm just using that as an example, or that there are there is no cross traffic and the light is red and you can't go, the system will know that, it will monitor traffic and then it will adjust itself accordingly. So I think you're gonna see significantly better traffic movement on Granada because of the uh, smart signals that are coming. Um, uh, you know, I, my office happens to be on the beach side um, and of course the new Starbucks opened there and it's busy, but it's not there haven't I haven't observed one time and I'm in and out of the office a lot during the day I haven't observed one time where there was any kind of backups at all on the street or anywhere else And there already is a Starbucks as, as Commissioner Purse has just said uh, Just a little bit west of there. So I'm I'm not really convinced that there will be that much more traffic uh, as a result of the new uh, the new Starbucks. Um, there was a comment about the growth rate. 
Um, you know, we're growing at about 1% a year and have been for quite a few years. We don't have outrageous growth going on in the greater Ormond Beach area or in Ormond Beach. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I don't consider that a big concern. I do consider the fatalities that have happened recently in Ormond Beach a major concern. And I know, um, we know a little bit, I know a little bit about some, but not all of those accidents. And um, I, I'm not sure there's any connection. You know, I'll, I'll defer to law enforcement or to traffic engineers about that. But um, I, I'm not sure that there's, I mean, we had racing on Nova Road, you know, that killed one lady who was fine for 15 minutes and then, you know, subsequently passed away at the hospital after she got there. We had a truck driver, you know, before dawn who walked across six lanes of Granada west of 95, you know, and the driver who drives that route every single day just did not see him. It was dark. He was wearing dark clothes. I mean, those are just a couple of the accidents. We had the pedestrians on the sidewalk where the truck was pulling into um, Lowe's or alongside Lowe's. I, there's just, to me, there's no connection. It's terrible that it happened. I feel terrible. I serve, I'm Ormond Beach's representative on the Transportation Planning Organization, which is two county wide area. And, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be a blip on that traffic safety uh, studies that are done every year because of this. I feel terrible about it, but I honestly, I don't see any connection between any of these. But the main thing I wanted to comment on was I, I recently, um, because I knew this was coming up, I drove into Chelsea Place. I drove through your neighborhood. I guess the gate was open. It was during the day. During the day, it's open, right? I don't know. Maybe somebody drove in ahead of me and opened the gate. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, I got in, and uh, I drove all the way down to Hand Avenue, came back, and then I came out. I just wanted to see, you know, how far it was. I had never been in there before. And I came out. I didn't need to make that U-turn at, uh, at the first place right there. But I got to say, that's not a legal movement. I mean, I, it's, let me put it that way. Let me put it another way. That's not a safe movement. Pulling, making it right out of Chelsea Place and trying to make the, the left turn or the U-turn at that first uh, left turn lane first of all that the D cell lane is half it's half done at your entrance okay so I would discourage anybody from ever trying to make that movement and it's only two tenths of a mile to the next crossover where you can make a legal and safe u-turn to go west and for those people I I appreciate the uh, the the timing study that uh, uh, Mr. Strakula did for the alternatives. Uh, the hand, I know people don't want to hear the Hand Avenue going out Hand Avenue, but realistically, that's a two lane road. It's a right turn. It's right, 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 right. And you're at Publix. I mean, there's nothing. There was a time when I think it was AT&T prohibited any of their commercial trucks from making left turns. Because they said left turns are where the, virtually all of the accidents happen and virtually no accidents happen on right turn. Now, they have ultimately gave that up because they realized it was taking guys hours to get to where, you know, in some cases, hours where they needed to go. But the point is that left turns, because of your crossing traffic, are indeed uh, more dangerous. So I will, be, I will be voting for this. The other thing I just want to say is that, um, that, that, yes, this requires a special exception, but our code provides for a special exception under certain conditions. And if you read through all those conditions, staff has concluded that this, um, that this request is within our code. So in light of that, I will be voting for it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Selby. Commissioner Littleton. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so the applicant is asking for a special exception. And you have to analyze whether or not uh, the conditions would allow it and I would see that the res size restriction of 2400 square feet the drive-through stacking double our code 
and their help in the Mirror Lake drainage issue uh, will warrant a special exception. So I'll be voting in favor. Thank you, Commissioner Littleton. Stephen, I had one question for you. Uh, eastbound on Granada, why not a desal lane for turning into the LV? So the applicant and staff met with DOT, and, and they were adamant in, in not allowing it. I don't recall the exact reasons. Uh, perhaps the engineer was there. Um, but they, they basically didn't allow the, the decel deceleration lane at this at this department of transportation right was it because they would it be more dangerous um I, I think it was the characteristics of of this development that basically they were not allowing it i'm not sure if roger was thank you Stephen. yep roger at, if at you the were time there. we met with dot to discuss it uh the turns did not warrant a right turn lane eastbound. Um, DOT was more concerned with the median opening at Mirror Lake as a safety improvement. Okay. Because they have multiple driveways west of this main driveway to turn into the development. All right. And is there space, I mean, I know it's probably between fifty and $100,000, but is there space available for a right turn diesel? Uh, no, they'd have to take additional right away and then encroach into the city's required 36 foot buffer. Okay. By the time you add additional lane, the curbing, relocate the sidewalk, which is a wider sidewalk, it, it would go, it would, in, it would go into outside the right away. Understood. Deputy Mayor, thank you. Okay. And thank you, Stephen. Uh, would this be something you could support if it included a diesel lane or are you still? just no way you know that might make me feel a little better as far as safety goes but um, it's it is weighing heavily on me as far as the actual use and what's going to what's going to happen there I I just foresee and and maybe I'm I'm not seeing it as clearly as everybody else but I I see some problems getting out of that location and getting into that location um, due to the wildly successful businesses that are there and want to go there I mean it's um, in, in one sense it's a great problem to have but I don't have the comfort level mr. mayor to uh, to give my support to this, I'm going to stick with where I was. All right. And um, I just thought I'd ask. I appreciate it. Let me give you my uh, my thoughts on it. Uh, the map that Mr. Hennan provided was excellent, and I appreciate appreciate that. Wherever. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, you know, it will pass three to two, or it'll pass four to one. Starbucks does an exceptional business. We had the grand opening ribbon cutting a few weeks ago for uh, the beachside location, and they explained to me that they're doing the business of of actually two plus stores there. That's how busy they are, and I think this location will relieve some of that. Um, so it'll relieve a little bit of the the Granada traffic on the beach side by having this. Uh, second store available the uh, with all that said it is going to be a busy complex Aldi is very popular uh, you know, I've seen the new one in Palm Coast there on 100 it's not uh, there's probably 20 20 spots of parking spots available at any given time during the day but with that, it's still very busy, and I expect ours certainly at the beginning, just like with Lucky's, will be extremely busy, and then we'll kind of function into a normal uh, rate of uh, participation. Things will smooth out a little bit. I, tonight, will uh, vote in support of this, but I'd, I would feel a lot more comfortable if there were a deceleration lane and that's just from my people drive out of control like 
out of control maniacs. Uh, I've said that before. Uh, we had a traffic suppression exercise in this city on Friday. Uh, within a four hour period, over 140 citations were written. I think 100, actually, I think it was 153. It might have been 140 people stopped. Um, and it's either, like Commissioner Selby said, it's either negligence, horrible accident, criminal activity, or a combination of those that have resulted in the deaths that we've experienced this year. And, and it is extremely unfortunate uh, for all the parties involved. But <clears throat> that traffic is there is, is my feeling, one way or the other, whether this goes in or not. That traffic is going to be there. It's going to be a very busy location. Uh, the D cell lane, I know because I live near Central Park, that when I'm coming eastbound on Granada, and this happens more frequently than I'd like to admit, but somebody's riding my tail, I'm going the speed limit, they're riding my tail. It is so nice that I have that D cell lane to turn into to turn right onto Old Tomoka Road and get to where I'm going versus not and having that person potentially rear in me. So I would have a lot better uh, comfort level with it. This will be back to us on a second reading and I'm voting no. no. It's just a resolution. It's just a resolution. All right, well in that case, I'm gonna uh, vote no. And uh, well, no, I will. I will vote for it, and that way, if I need to make a motion to reconsider, I can do so. But it'll be four to one instead of three to two. So, either way, it's going to pass. But those are my those are my thoughts on it. Uh, Roger, you may not be happy to to hear that. I did not meet with you, just as I did not meet with anybody from Chelsea Place. Uh, you offered, and I explained that I I wasn't meeting with them, and so I'm not meeting with you. I wanted to hear everything in the open and make a decision based on all the information that I had presented. So <coughs> I think the city would work with you on that buffer. If there was a way to install a D-cell lane, uh, I would urge you to consider that option as a, uh, a smart thing to do, a safer thing to do, and a better thing to do. If there's any way to make that, make that happen, but um, with that said, unless there's any other Comments. I'll ask Colby to call the vote. Commissioner Kent. No. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. That brings us to 9B. Resolution number 2019-133, a resolution authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a special exception regarding the proposed Orman Garage restaurant located at 48 West Granada Boulevard within the B4 Central Business Zoning District within the Downtown Overlay District to allow alternate building signage totaling 14 building signs of a combined 245.98 plus or minus square feet establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-133 read by title only. Thank you Colby and I'll ask Planning Director Steven Spraker to speak on this item as well. This, again, uh, Steve Spraker, Planning Director. This again is a special exception within the Downtown Overlay District. If items don't meet the Land Development Code, there's an opportunity to come to the City Commission uh, to have them reviewed. The site is uh, next to City Hall, uh, the garage shown here. The project has existing signage um, that was installed sometime after 2007. Um, the applicant is seeking to install a projecting sign on this facade and a wall sign on this facade. Um, the exhibit in the site plan shows the total number of signs. There would be a total of 14 signs at about 245 uh, square feet. The review at the planning board and the recommendation of, of Orman Main Street was basically this was a great repurposing of this building, that basically this was how you want to use historic properties and that the signage tied in the historic characteristics of the property. Um, the property owner did um, install the signs without permits or commission approval. 
Um, there was a mix-up, I believe, and they're here to address the commission. Um, if the commission does not approve it, they would have to remove the sign. Otherwise, they would get permits. Um, staff is recommending approval. The planning board recommended approval, six to zero. And um, Orm Main Street had a great quote that was included in there that basically, you know, said that this was a way to repurpose and to have these building be buildings become character defining. So I thought that was a great quote. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? I'll just, you said it, they were installed without permission, but the applicant was saying that's not the case. So. I'll let the applicant address the board. Okay. <laughs> you almost got off without <laughs> having to talk, Dorian. <laughs> Dorian Burt, 203 Pinecone Trio. I'm the applicant for the owner with a GECO LLC, which is one of the Jones Family Trusts. The signs that depict the garage, like oil, lube, gas, which storage and repairs, um, somebody put those up without permission a long time ago because they did research and there are other buildings like this that had those signs and you see the Goodyear signs? Those are historic, not replicas. And they had the holes matching to the holes that were already in the building. So like those signs, not those particular ones, but signs just like those were there on that building. So when we came to determine that it was going to be the Orman Garage Brewery Restaurant. We needed a signage to that effect. Not about the building, but about the business. So Stephen gave me the square footage of what's allowed without those other signs. Those other signs are, I don't, I don't, they're not advertising a business. They're just kind of a historic designation. Now, those two signs for the business did go up without permission inadvertently. I'll pay a fine. I'll apply for the permit tomorrow. I'll offer to take them down and put them back up. And I won't let this mistaken episode happen again in the future. So please forgive us. Anyhow, he really likes his warm and lube and all that stuff. So I hope you can find your way to approve this. Thank you, Dorian. I think in lieu of a fine, if we could just watch you and Stephen work this out, that would be uh, <laughs> satisfactory. <laughs> all right. I don't have uh, any other cards. I'd like I do to need a motion one. and a second. Move, I, uh, move approval, Mr. Mayor, on sec this item. Second. Moved by Deputy Mayor Kent, seconded by Commissioner Selby. Any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to comment on this. First of all, when I when I was just reading through the agenda and saw fourteen signs, I was like, "Oh, are you kidding me? Fourteen signs!" And then when I then I see the pictures and I go, "Really? There's fourteen of them?" But anyway, what I want to say is that this is fantastic. I mean, I love this. This is, the, uh, this is the kind of precedent that I love to set because this, I can't even imagine what the building would look like without those signs up there. As long as I can remember those signs have been on the front of that building, which that might only be a week or two, but that, that I can remember. <laughs> but any, no, in any case, seriously, this is exactly this historic um, renovation of this building and, and the creation of the rear wall you know, that matches the front wall. The money that the owner has spent on this is, uh, is unbelievable. I can't wait for it to open. And I hope that lots of other people in Ormond Beach come forward requesting a similar type special exception for equal uh, investment in our historic preservation of the area. So I'm all for it. Thank you, Commissioner. Deputy Mayor Kent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dorian, I want you to tell Mr. Jones something. I want you to tell him thank you. And he's told the story why Ormond Beach. I am so grateful that his father brought him here as a child 
and he has those nostalgic feelings come back to him. His vision for this area of our downtown community, and people have short memories. But if memory serves me right, you have before and after pictures of what this area looked like before Bill Jones came in and decided that this Ormond Beach was going to be his, his project, something that would last and something for his, his children and something for his community. And I just, I just publicly wanted to, to get your ear for a minute and ask that you, you tell him thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Commissioner Persis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am so excited about this project, too, and, and I agree with um, Deputy Mayor Kent. Please thank Mr. Jones for everything he's done. Everything he does for our city is top-notch and first class, so it's, it's just very exciting to see um, this come to fruition. Growing up here, I remember the Ormond Garage. I mean, driving down Granada. I mean, those of us that grew up here, and, and to still see it there, it, it still looks the same just about. So that's, it's very exciting. I think it's going to be a fun place. It's going to draw a lot of more people downtown. So uh, again, I agree. I agree. Let's let's tell him thank you. A big, huge thank you. Perfect. I think I think it's all been covered. Uh, Colby, if you will, please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. Thank you. But you still have to work it out with Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, you still owe a fine, well, Dorian. That's fine. That's tough. <laughs> you know that fine. <laughs> All right, 9C. Resolution number 2019-134, a resolution authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a special exception regarding the Granada Surf Shop located at 220 East Granada Boulevard within the B4 Central Business Zoning District within the Downtown Overlay District to allow outdoor activity to include the permanent outdoor display slash sales of merchandise, including surfboard rentals, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2019-134, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. Stephen, we're keeping you busy tonight. <laughs> this is the last of our special exceptions. Um, Within the B4 zoning district, anything that's stored outside the building for sale or for rent requires a special exception. Um, this property was um, under code enforcement action. Someone complained regarding um, the two surfboards. The application is just what you see. They would like to display those two surfboards out there. Um, if they rent it, one goes away and, and they come back when they're done renting it. Um, the development order is written specifically um, for that. The building is unique in that it has that outcove. So basically this, the sidewalk ends at the end of the bricks. So this is all on private property. Um, appears to work pretty well. The planning board recommended approval is six to zero and staff is also recommending approval of the outdoor activities per the resolution. Thank you, Stephen. I don't have any cards. Is there a motion in a second? I'll move uh, resolution 2019-134. Second. Moved by Commissioner Selby, seconded by Commissioner Persis. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. I, I'm going to approve this. There was one in the past I didn't, but, um, you know, there's also some in the past that I have. I mean, it makes sense at Lowe's to have some outside vending going on. It makes sense for the State Road 40 Granada Surf Shop to have two surfboards basically on their own private property. And I'm just pleased that there's no, like, you know, giraffes or... Um, roosters or anything out there you know this <laughs> this makes sense so i'll approve this tonight thank you deputy mayor commissioner persis no i think uh, a surf shop needs to advertise what they're what they're in the business for so i think having those two surfboards out there is perfect i think it's going to draw a lot of people in and and uh, really get some business in there so i'm, I'm excited about this so i will approve it also Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Littleton? Yes. Commissioner Selby? Yes. Commissioner Kent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And we will close the public hearings and move to 10A. Ordinance number 2019-18, an ordinance amending Chapter 12, Business Regulations, Article 9, Solicitors of the Code of Ordinances, by amending Section 12-249, Definitions, and setting forth an effective date. 
This is the first reading of Ordinance Number 2019-18, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. I do not have any cards. Move for approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? You know, I just I just have a quick um, comment. So what we're what we're doing is we're adding the phrase or soliciting the sale of services to be furnished or performed. That's correct. Yes, it's it's somewhat of a housekeeping matter, um, and it was brought to our attention. Um, with a lot of the tree trimming services going to door to door and we when we took a look at the ordinance we realized you know it, it's kind of dated um, back you know probably written in the times when there were a lot of you know catalog sales and you know of course a lot of those things have changed and it didn't address specifically sale of services so it, it's really just to add that to make sure we've got it covered okay so just bear with me for a minute but are they soliciting the sale of services or are they soliciting the purchase of services? Uh, I would say it's one and the same. But with the sale of services, <laughs> I think that might be semantics. Uh, I, I think that they are selling their services. Okay. And someone is going to purchase their services. I, I think it's saying the same thing. Any other questions or discussion? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And that brings us to reports, suggestions, and requests. And tonight we start with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Commission for their time um, this summer that they spent reviewing not only the capital budget, but also the operating budget. Um, probably all told we gave you about 900 pages of documentation you went through it diligently and uh, you gave us um, direction and um, moved us forward on that so we really appreciate your time on that um, as you had heard earlier um, we did undertake a um, traffic uh, suppression uh, issue uh, task force if you will um, last Friday Friday's is our highest crash day um, you had heard some folks recount some of the accidents that we had had, um, but the police chief and his staff had a really wonderfully creative idea where they partnered with other jurisdictions, including Daytona Beach Shores, uh, Deland PD, and Port Orange, and they came over here in their vehicles and they assist us, assisted us in a four-hour traffic suppression initiative. We um, had 131 traffic stops, 143 citations were issued, seven warnings, um, three criminal traffic charges, and one felony arrest. Uh, it was a five-hour operation, um, and uh, they had a debrief with it. So uh, great work by the OBPD on that effort. Uh, we've been trying to w raise awareness on that corridor because of the speeding that we've had. Um, as someone said up here on the dais tonight that we have had a number of fatalities. They really are oddly collected, but not necessarily relative truly to more bad driving behavior or criminal activity than uh, necessarily the amount of traffic. So thank you, uh, the PD, for their efforts on that. Um, we're going to be having um, our next meeting on Wednesday, August 7th, because our very famous and wonderfully um, attended uh, National Night Out is on Tuesday, August 6th. So we always move that meeting. So we hope that you'll come out and, and join us for a great time. And then um, the Downtown Master Plan Workshop will be held on Wednesday, August 7th. They, you know the downtown group has been studying uh, the update of the master plan. They're there to uh, get your feedback and to uh, continue moving that plan forward so we can get that adopted. Then commission meeting will follow at 7 p.m. Um, a couple of other things uh, happening. Um, uh, John Noble, our city engineer, retired with um, the city in July after almost 30 years of service. Um, when we have those uh, folks retire out of our community, it's really difficult. But we were glad that we had an in-house um, uh, person Sean Finley was our deputy Cindy engineer and he's been with us seven years ten years 
How time flies. It feels like seven, Julie. It feels like seven. Um, and we're pleased to announce his promotion um, to uh, city engineer. So well done. We're in good hands. And also, we have recently hired a public information officer, Jen Elston, who's doing a great job for us. And thank the commission for helping us have a better presence on social media and, and getting your voice out. Um, lots have happened in the last six weeks. Um, I've been trying to stay in good contact with you, and that's all I have unless you have some questions or suggestions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joyce. Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Uh, congratulations to Sean Finley. Um, you're just excellent to work with. Thank you for tutoring us all in engineering. And that's it. Thank you. Good night. All right. Uh, City Attorney, not Randy Hayes. <laughs> Uh, thank you and good night. Good night. Good night. And tonight we start with Deputy Mayor Kent. Oh, wow. it, we've, it's been so long since we've had a meeting. I, I was trying to remember who was going first tonight. My money was on Littleton. I thought it was. I know he was all ready. Uh, just, just a couple, just a couple of, of things this evening. I felt like we did a great thing with our budget this evening. And I had members of the public and city employees afterwards come up and say, great job. And I thought, I've never heard that in 17 years, ever, after a budget meeting like that, ever. So it, um, it meant something. So I, I appreciate that. And we almost always vote together. And that says something. And sometimes we don't. And that, and that also says something. It's, it's healthy, I think. But I just want to remind this commission, you're my people. And I'm your people. We're on the same team. So I'm here for you. And I appreciate you all. And I've missed you. <laughs> we haven't had a meeting in so long. But it's, it's good to see you all again. And I'm not trying to change anything for next summer, Joyce. Don't, don't, get, don't read that the wrong way. Coffee with Commissioner Kent always happens the first Monday of every month, and we're going to need to implement a time change because my working hours are going to change a little bit. And I, it, that's okay. It's, it's, a, it's a healthy change. So it was always 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. I would, that's not accurate. It used to be 5.30 to 6.30, and then I changed it for the dinner hour. And I turned, changed it to 4.30 to 5.30. So I'm not trying to confuse everybody. But the new time is going to be 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. So 5 to 6 p.m., Monday, August 5th, next Coffee with Commissioner. My house, 130 Magnolia Drive. Any and all are welcome. We talk about anything that you want to talk about. Sean Finley, congratulations. That's good stuff. Um, I'm happy for you. Jen Elstein, welcome aboard. Glad you're, glad you're here. And if I said it before, I'll say it again. Colby, it's so good to have you back. Thanks. So um, with that, Mr. Mayor, have a, have a great evening. Thank you, Deputy Mayor and Commissioner Persis. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say um, hello to everyone out there. I also wanted to congratulate uh, Sean Finley on his promotion and welcome Jen Elston. Um, I know her parents and, and I know they're real proud of her getting this position and we're, we're so happy to have you. Um, I also think we did a fabulous job with the budget tonight. Um, it's great working with people who, you know, they know what they're talking about. They, they, they ask questions, questions that need to be asked but we really always come up with a good consensus. And I think um, we've done some great things with our, our police department and our fire department, which you know we all know safety is so important. So I'm very, very excited about that. I'm thrilled we're going to get concession stands in the bathroom for our girls softball field. That's just another wonderful thing that's, that's happened and among many other things. Um, I'm excited to for National Night Out next week. It's gonna be a big event. Um, I know a lot of people will be there, so uh, I appreciate the, everyone that puts that on very much. Um, I did want to let everyone know I represent the City Commission on the Downtown Master Plan, and some of the things we talk about are, um, you know, making Ormond Beach even better. That was kind of what I was saying in my campaign, let's make Ormond Beach even better, so that, I love this committee. 
but one of the things they they really have suggested that we do is to really enhance our Main Street. So whatever we can do to enhance Main Street. So this Ormond Garage that's coming is gonna you know, definitely do that. Um, they want to unite the four corners, the four corners of our bridge and, and have some kind of you know, activity at each one. Um, and this was a person from outside our area that came in and talked about those things. And the other thing was just to really make our bridge look better. Um, our bridge is great, but it's not that attractive when you look at some of the other bridges in other cities um, around Florida and in other states. So those are some things that you may be hearing about in the future. Um, just just want to thank everybody again on the commission. I'm the newest one, and um, I just am really enjoying working with everyone up here. So with that, I'll say good night. Thank you, Commissioner Persis. Commissioner Littleton. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Folks, as the summer has been heating up, uh, hurricane season will also be heating up, and it has been so far. Uh, I would highly suggest everyone make sure they get their hurricane supplies in order. Uh, furthermore, in the budget meeting, staff said we possibly got Irma checks in the mail in the last couple of weeks. I would, would surely like to see a report on how much we've gotten back. Uh, fellow commissioners, the city was gracious enough to purchase a membership to the American City County Exchange. And uh, on a uh, future agenda, I'll ask to be traveling to the December policy conference for them, and I would like your support in that matter. And I'll see you guys all Tuesday in National Night Out. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. And Commissioner Selby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I wanted to say, um, Congratulations or thank you to Chief Godfrey for the uh, tag readers and using, uh, you know, call it drug seizure money to do that. I think that's great. Um, the, those uh, licensed tag readers, they'll be camera, for those of you who don't know, they'll be cameras strategically positioned um, around the city that have the ability to read license plates. And uh, they're monitored uh, via computers 24-7. And when police put in a tag that they're looking for that was involved in a crime or something else, as soon as it spots it, it brings it up right away. So, um, yeah, all bad guys, yeah, they, they love them. Um, so that's a, that's a great thing and a great use of funds. And, uh, and we'll, it'll tie into the crime center that the, um, that the sheriff runs in Daytona Beach. And I have not yet visited that, but I'm told that we can and uh, would encourage anybody who wants to see it. Um, it's pretty amazing, I guess. Sort of like uh, 24, you know, kind of like that show, you know, with the big TVs up on the walls, you know, and that kind of thing. So um, I just wanted to bring up to speed on two things. First, the uh, homeless shelter, you know, a meeting never happens that we don't generate a headline. It was online this morning. Our meeting was uh, yesterday. It was online this morning. I guess it'll be in tomorrow's paper. Uh, the meeting went from 4 until 7 p.m., and that's kind of been typical lately, two to, two to three hours long. Um, still, base, the, the city of Daytona Beach is going to get a conditional CEO on or before September 30th. That's, that's the best news I have for you, okay, because the construction will effectively be done on September 30th. They'll, they'll, they've said that they will punch it out uh, within 30 days. So by the end of October, um, it'll, they will be 100% done with construction. Um, and so hopefully shortly thereafter, or about that same time, the shelter will be operational. And I'm hopeful that once that actually happens, that, that there'll be less um, interference is the best way to describe it I would say you know they they created the board that I serve on representing this commission and our residents to operate the place and yet the city staff at Daytona Beach continues to inject themselves into policy decisions and operational decisions and uh, and they give us very little information about the design and the structure and the changes that they make the most recent thing is the kitchen you know we we told them we wanted a full service kitchen 
they said that's going to cost four hundred thousand dollars to put the equipment in we said buy used equipment you can get that for you know probably a hundred thousand dollars that turned into a warming kitchen which has now morphed into you know maybe a warming kitchen but really buying meals from the jail okay so that's that's a big concern um, the second thing is laundry equipment uh, there's are my understanding is it's supposed to be turnkey that there should be commercial laundry equipment to do the linens and the towels and so forth and then there should be smaller um, washers and dryers so that the residents can keep their own clothes clean um, we're, we'll we'll see whether or not that actually materializes or not right now we're that's up in the air anyway I, I just stay focused in on the completion date and getting the thing operational I think Catholic Charities will do a great job running the facility for us um, I wanted to switch to uh, septic to sewer and before I do that though I wanted to acknowledge Bill Denny uh, Linda Williams and uh, those, those are the two of the founders of civil discourse uh, that created the venue that Mr. Denny spoke about earlier. Ms. Ms. Per Ms. Persis spoke uh, at uh, their meeting a couple of weeks ago, maybe three, four weeks ago. I spoke a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was a great environment. Um, honestly, I was actually a little bit nervous because on social media there was a lot of chatter uh, to go and let them know, you know, what a bad idea this is, and you know. And uh, so I made sure that Joyce was there and Gabe was there and, you know, two or three other staff people. The Sean was there. And um, uh, but what what they were able to do, the way they structure this thing is really great. And it it provides the opportunity for uh, communication, for civilized, for civil discourse, for communication in a civilized manner. And it was really, it was really great. I really, I want to thank you all for, you know, for creating that, and for uh, inviting me to speak there. Um, we have been, we meaning, we have sort of a volunteer steering committee on this septic to sewer, and we have identified a lot of organizations and and um, governmental electeds uh, that we elected officials that we're meeting with, with the. To, um, for organizations, it's to uh, get their support because we believe that a broad-based coalition of uh, organizations and individuals that support the movement, the conversion from septic to sewer on, in the, on the North Peninsula is really important. It's really going to help to sell it to those who have their reservations about it. And it's been pretty effective. We've gotten a couple of letters of endorsement so far. We're expecting many more. This, the meetings with the state electeds have gone very well. And then we also had a meeting today with uh, Congressman Michael Waltz. And that went, I think, very well also. He clearly understands the importance of it. And while there's not a lot of federal money available for these kinds of projects, and of course they can't do earmarks anymore um, so a direct appropriation is not possible but but he did say that he would connect us with the programs that he knew of and they would do additional research so we're working hard on that and to that end what I want to ask uh, you all tonight is one of the things that we desperately need uh, well we don't desperately need well one of the things we need is a um, is a, a resolution of support from Volusia County. We can't go into this uh, without their support. We're meeting with each of the county council people and we're asking for their support and we're telling them that we would like unanimous support. We're not, we're not going to let anybody think that they, you know, we want everybody to know that we think unanimous support is really important. And the reason we're saying that is that we, we perceive that state funds are going to get more and more competitive. It's going to be harder and harder over time as the governor has ramped up water quality, you know, statewide, that other communities are going to be competing for this. And we don't want the chink in our armor that, well, you only had a, a fine, you didn't even, you couldn't even get unanimous support from your county council. You know, we don't want somebody else saying that about our package, our request. 
And so we're, we're, we, we don't think there's going to be a problem with that, but I'm just, I'm just letting you know that we're doing that. So I think in order to get that resolution, we need to officially ask the county to do that, to provide us a resolution. So I, I'm not sure exactly what the procedure is. Is that do you want get a consensus here this evening, Joyce? Is that so? If you give a consensus for a staff to draft one, we can bring that back to you. Do you want a letter signed by all of us? Um, I think he was looking for a specific resolution. For a resolution? Huh. Yeah. So I, I, I think the idea is that uh, that we might we might draft the to make it easy for the county we might draft a you know a sample resolution uh for and present it to the county that you know our, our uh, attorney's office city attorney's office would do that yes we, we could do that we could provide them with a draft of and we could pre-approve it so we would know what it would say before we submitted it all right forgive me for being confused you want the resolution from us or you want a letter signed by all of us forwarding the proposed resolution to county for their approval unanimously hopefully well w what we could do or is both. we could bring back a, um, a draft resolution that would we could give to the county for them to to make it easier for them they would know exactly what it is we were hoping that they would um, be on board with okay I'm just suggesting a letter signed by each of us to show That's unanimous approval on our part yeah requesting unanimous approval on their part to go along with it correct to yes. transmit oh okay yeah sure. as the transmittal cover letter yeah that's a great idea yeah. that really is a great idea something like that okay Got it. good deal I think anybody have any objection to that no. I think okay. everybody's in favor of that all right and with that I'll say good night thank you thank you Commissioner uh, the fireworks the four corners celebration was tremendous lots and lots of positive uh, comments on that every year it does seem to get better and uh, Robert and his staff supported by uh, public works and police and fire do an amazing job putting that all together uh, and the generals are always there in the background making it all work out financially and, and otherwise so thank you for that uh, I wanted to congratulate our fire battalion commander David King I believe it's his 20 year work anniversary with the city of Ormond Beach today at least that's what popped up on my LinkedIn uh, website and uh, he's an amazing man and uh, I've seen him in action uh, had the opportunity to see him in action some years ago and uh, have also been on visits with the department and, and seen and talked to him there and I just have a tremendous amount of respect for him uh, so congratulations on 20 years with the city congratulations also to uh, leisure services Robert you had some good news uh, that popped up let me see if I can find it here Siobhan Daly and Annie Everett will be recognized for their efforts in Enviro Camp and the Community Garden Program, winning some uh, statewide awards. And the Ormond Beach Observer uh, did an article recognizing that. Uh, the awards are from the Florida Festival and Events Association. And uh, Siobhan, who's our Cultural Center Coordinator at the Casements, is going to be recognized for her role in the Enviro Camp Program with an Education Program Award. And Annie Everett, who's the Environmental Discovery Center Coordinator, will accept a Green Program Award for the city's Community Garden Program. So exciting things happening there. And uh, that's as a result of the leadership, Robert, from you and from Joyce and uh, their hard work. It just makes, makes Ormond Beach look great, even better statewide. So very pleased with that. The traffic crash uh, suppression piece was impressive and thank you chief for and Joyce for putting that together and making sure that it happened uh, I know DW you were involved in the coordination of that a multi-agency suppression drill and I guess you know using that crime view data that you talked about Commissioner Selby uh, shows that our city's peak time for traffic crashes is on Friday afternoons and so with that information available you 
made this event happen on a Friday afternoon and that evening there were zero crashes uh, during the operation and for the remainder of the night. Uh, some folks had tracked that on social media and there was a lot of positive feedback, folks actually welcoming the enforcement and so uh, thank you for putting that together and I hope, uh, hope things like that will continue in the future. It's a great opportunity for interagency cooperation, uh, develop some camaraderie uh, between those agencies and uh, those folks helped us and I know you're thanking them. I hope you'll send my thanks along with your thanks and uh, I think we'll be available to help them reciprocate, help them as well. So, uh, Jen Elston, welcome. Thank you uh, for being on board. Our social media presence has been incredible since you've been here. And uh, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, there may be other social media outlets that I'm not really uh, using a lot that, that you're taking advantage of. But Instagram. Instagram, thank you. Uh, just simple things like the back to school sales tax holiday. I got a tweet about that from the city of Ormond Beach. It says it's that time of year again. Hope you all score some great deals during the Ormond Beach back to school sales tax holiday, which is August 2nd through the 6th. Things that a lot of people might let slip by or not know about. Uh, we've had some intense heat over the last few weeks, putting out an advisory to folks, uh, explaining what a heat advisory is and what precautions you can take, particularly for our younger residents and our seniors, uh, that's information that is helpful and improves their lives. And uh, I just think it's great to have uh, a much more effective and personal communication with our residents. So welcome, Jen, and thank you for that. Sean, congratulations, well-deserved. Uh, quiet and competent are the two words that come to mind when when I think about Sean Finley uh, and just a hard worker who's always available and has a logical explanation for things. Um, can't appreciate that enough. Okay. And uh, so congratulations and, and well-deserved. I also want to welcome uh, Cassidy Ritz, our new recording secretary. Great to have you with us. And uh, with that, we'll say good night. Thank you all. Call it a wrap. Can you hit me up with an almond joy?